I will not stop talking if I'm interrupted by a man. I will keep talking until he becomes so uncomfortable that he stops talking. There's been a rise in my female viewership over the last month, so yay ladies! <laughs> Welcome aboard. Although I hope I don't lose half of them today because there's a small sect in my gender that can't ever seem to handle criticism. To them, love is about support only and nothing else. Okay, it's not really a small sect, it's probably 90% of my gender that thinks that way. I hope that that is a gross overestimation on my part, but personally, I found that to be true at about just the same percentage. Now, why did I bring this up? Well, it's a disclaimer. This video is me talking about yet another particularly irritating thing women do and are doing right now on TikTok. So, unaccountable women who cannot stand criticism may not like this one, but that is not you, my female viewers. I am confident that you will still be here at the end of this video. <laughs> Remember, we love women. That is why we should call them out when they are going off it. Like in the case of these microfeminism videos. What is microfeminism? Well, in basic terms, microfeminism is the small, deliberate action taken to combat everyday sexism, particularly in workplaces and social settings. Now, let's break down some microfeminism videos. Before I get into it, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss another episode of A Nigerian Take with Dio. And whilst you're at it, like and share this video. All right, guys, let's get into it. My act of microfeminism is that when I've just had a baby and when people come to my house, like a man and a woman or like relatives or whatever, I will always thrust my baby in the direction of the man first. So I'll be like, can you hold my baby while I, you know, have a shower or something? Uh, because women are always holding babies. We always expect it. So men can get used to it. Sometimes in the lift, if someone, a man, is waiting for me to go, I also stand and wait for him to go. So on every rental application and lease we've ever had, I've put myself as the primary contact and every time a real estate or a tradesperson gets in contact and defers to my partner, I make him uh, then re-loop me in. Whenever a man calls me like sweetie or darling or gorgeous, I will call them that back. So anytime <laughs> anyone's talking about someone in a, the position of power, I'll just assume that it's a woman and I'll be like, oh, what did your boss say? What's she doing? And all that kind of stuff. I'll just refer to them as a woman. When I'm walking, I on purpose don't get out of the way. I just keep my ground. And um, if men bump into me, they bump into me. When I send an email, my natural impulse is to say, hey, just checking in. Hey, just checking on that brief. And I always delete the just and say, hey, checking in. <laughs> Give me the brief. Okay, rude. All right, all right. Let's break this down. The first lady giving your baby to a man. Uh, women hold babies because we are more nurturing. And I think a baby is definitely more comfortable in the bosom of a lady that's just my opinion anyway then the second lady the elevator standing thing <laughs> i love that particular video because remember when i posted the rise of ken video where i had like trad wise versus feminist have you noticed what's happening on tiktok there's a fresh battle between trad wives and feminists. I'm not a feminist. I can see men and I don't immediately feel threatened. I'm not a feminist. And then people ask me if I'm actually a woman. I'm not a feminist. I can wear dresses and feel pretty. I'm not a feminist. Thank you. I'm not a feminist. I don't hate children. I'm not a feminist. I would watch this video and I wouldn't be offended. This video got up to 3 million views on TikTok and well, feminists and fellow keypad social justice warriors in the comments didn't like it very much. Somebody said, saying I'm not a feminist is so pick me energy. You're trying so hard to seek male validation and it's disgusting. As a feminist, you need to get educated. You are taking us back 30 years. If you don't support women as a woman, please keep quiet while we fight for your rights. How pretentious. Some people in the comments, albeit extremely few, this is TikTok after all, got the point. Like this one, we've completely lost the plot on feminism. Exactly. Some people in the comments were like, girl, you have no idea what feminism is. She knows nothing about feminism. The poster, that's me, doesn't know anything about feminism, yada, yada, yada. Well, well, well. These are also feminists. And did you hear what she said? If someone, a man, is waiting for me to go, I also stand and wait for him to go. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. 
Yeah, but no, 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 no. Keep acting brand new because we non-feminists that are pointing these things out, we're just pulling it out of our ass. We didn't get it from anywhere. Nobody gave us that impression. We just pulled it right out of our ass. Someone is being nice to this lady and here she is being rude by mocking their niceness. The person is waiting for you to go into the lift because you're a lady and he's treating you like a lady and he's being polite. That by the way, which he can do for anybody else, not just a lady, he could also do it for a man. And then that's how you respond and you call that microfeminism. Okay. Then the one after her, she said something about referring to people's bosses as she. Well, newsflash, you'd probably be wrong because there are way more men in such positions. And it's not because of men are better than women. It's because men take more risks in business. The choices women make essentially are very different from the choices men make. And this is a known fact already. If you want more women to be the boss, then women are going to have to make very different choices. The lady in black talking about men not moving out of the way, she clattering into a random stranger because she's a micro-feminist, is also contradictory to what the elevator lady says. So basically, if men are willing to let you go in the lift first, why on earth would they not move when they're on the way? I personally have not experienced that with men. And I know a lot of ladies who would agree with me. Well, I'm from a different place anyway, so maybe that's not how it is where I'm from. Ladies, share in the comments if this is true. Well, even if it is true, I don't see why the solution is you clattering into the person. There's a lot of room on the road, I, I would like to think. You guys have like really large sidewalks. Why are you dragging one particular lane with a man? What's the point? Older people in Africa would say that you should pick your fights, you pick your battles. Don't expend energy over something that is stupid and unnecessary and doesn't add anything to your life. So I don't really see how clattering into a complete stranger adds any sort of value to your life. Plus, just flip the script for a second. If men held the same attitude towards women on the road and they just clattered into them, a lot more women would end up in the hospital hurt because he's stronger than you, okay? So that is you putting yourself at risk and you're not doing any good for yourself because if the man chooses to respond to your aggression the same way you have treated him, you're going to get hurt. The very last one, this one I really, really want to touch on because my God. Two things. The type of person that would add fillers into their texts or emails where they'll say, I'm just checking this, I'm just... Those are the types of people from my own experience that are passive. And it's not just my experience. There's literature on this. The proof is out there. Agreeable people tend to use fillers to speak, to sort of cushion what they are saying. So essentially, when you're agreeable, you tend to speak as if you are a subordinate. You tend to speak as if you are subservient to somebody else. All right. So what I'm saying is it's not a woman thing. No. It just so happens that the temperament of majority of females, we have more agreeable women, and so they would talk that way. So it's not microfeminism. You're just a passive person, okay? You're just passive. You're just not assertive. And the other thing is people that don't speak very well, that are not very good at a language, tend to add feelers like just and like to sound better. Things like literally, you know, they, they say literally a million times. They say like a million times. They say just a million times. They tend to add those things. That is one thing. The second thing is when you speak assertively as a woman, for the most part, you experience pushback from women, actually. In my own experience, I'm an assertive lady. I don't talk with fillers. I talk to you straightforward to your face. I tell you what it is. I'm not rude, but I pick my words. I do not like to speak and I'm all draggy, like, just like I do not like to give a handshake to somebody and then you can't give me a firm handshake. I hate it. Over the course of my life, I have been ganged up on. I have been insulted. I have been called names that I did not even deserve from women in response to my assertiveness because they somehow expect me to talk to them like I'm begging them or I, I owe them something. So from what I've seen, women are the ones that act negatively towards an assertive woman and not men. The contrary, Men tend to appreciate you being more straightforward and more direct when you speak to them. Women, unfortunately, cannot handle this for the most part, maybe because of the more gentle, nurturing personality trait, especially when the woman has a low, lower IQ point, at least from my own experience. She tends to get offended when you just speak straightforward and when you just speak assertive to them. 
people with lower IQ points, this includes men too, there are men with lower IQ points that react negatively. I'm not saying they aren't, but across board, I have noticed more negative response from women based on being an assertive person than I have noticed from men. So if you're just going to be abrupt when you're sending emails, it, it, it has to do with you you're the one that is passive in the first place or you're not very good at language that's why you're doing that you shouldn't use that as an excuse to be rude to people because you need to understand that you're talking in text so you have to be careful how you put your words as well the the basic politeness you know i think politeness is actually expected of everyone not just women so i don't know where you're getting that from and if at all politeness is expected from women i doubt that it's from men it's women that expect that of women moving on so i'm on the sidewalk on the correct side of the sidewalk only taking out my one little lane and i'm walking to the car and sure enough there's a group of eight young men walking towards me taking up the entire sidewalk none of them are on their phones they're talking to each other but they're all looking forward and they just keep walking forward nobody moves over they are taking up the entire sidewalk and i just kept walking in my lane and i literally walked into one of them anyways i'm a recovering people pleaser and in my early 20s i met with a licensed counselor anyway she's the one who told me to pay attention when i'm walking Walking on sidewalks because men will rarely yield to women if they're walking in a group and walking opposite directions. They'll just expect you to move out of the way. And so the microfeminist thing to do is to just stay in your lane and let them run into you. And don't apologize because they're not following the rules of the sidewalk. What is wrong with these people? Because I don't get it. Why are you so fixated on such things? Okay, maybe it is true. Let's say it's true. So what? Girls in a group don't move for anybody either. Anyone that would try to come from the other way, you would have to move because they are walking in a group. It's a very normal thing. It doesn't have to do with being a man. Why are you seeing gender where there is none? What sort of paranoia is this? I absolutely, absolutely cannot understand why anyone would choose to live like this, to have this sort of worldview. But my favorite form of like microfeminism is that when I send an email, let's say to like a CEO and you know, you have to copy their assistant okay. for scheduling purposes. If the assistant is a female, I will always in this, in the email to line, I will always enter their email address before the CEOs. So if like the CEO was Bob and the assistant is a female named Jane, I'm always going to put the two line Jane and then the CEO, like nobody probably notices, but it, makes me feel like I see you. Another thing that I do kind of along the same lines is if I'm emailing a team, I will always address the woman first in the actual email. So I'll be like, hey, Kathy and Joe. (laughs) I'm having a hard time coming with names. Anyway, that's my favorite form of microfeminism. Okay, congratulations. You reference a lady first. Men do that too. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, yet you chastise them for saying ladies and gentlemen, for saying ladies first. You're only doing what men have always wanted to do, which you shut them down on, but are now trying to do yourself. The irony, guys. The irony. I'm so glad you asked because I actually do participate in a lot of microfeminisms, especially at work. I find Mm. in general at work that I'm not interrupted by women in meetings, but I am often interrupted by men. So if I'm interrupted by men, I will then in turn interrupt them back, but I will never interrupt another woman when she is speaking. This is one that I am pretty feral for, but I will not stop talking if I'm interrupted by a man. I will keep talking until he becomes so uncomfortable that he stops talking. And then when he finally does stop trying to interrupt me, I will finish what I'm saying. But I'll usually say something that's a little bit uncomfortable for him, like, oh, great. Now that you've finished interrupting me, I can finish my point before you continue. I also do this if anyone interrupts another woman that is speaking. I will ask the man to stop interrupting to let her finish her thought before he continues. I have no doubt that women do face some challenges in the workplace because we're in an overlap type generation where some people still have certain beliefs and then that hasn't completely died out yet. I'll give her, I'll give her that much valid. But what are you doing? If you're judging everything based on your sex, what if the person that interrupted you did so rightfully? What if you said something that was not correct? They need to give you a quick correction on that so you don't carry on with the wrong message. So if you have this war and, you know, gender battle in your head, if you're seeing enemies where they are known, how do you distinguish? This is the basic, you know, men are evil and women are good thing. So you would never interrupt a woman while she's talking. What if she needs to be interrupted? What if you need to point out something that she may have not noticed? Not every interruption is a bad one. What have we become, ladies? What what is this? This is not a very positive way to look at life. This is not a very good way to look at life. But 
I don't know what her personal experiences have been. I don't know what led her to that. But I doubt there's anything you could do to me that would make me have this default mentality in my head. I always use female identifying language. So if you're telling me you went to the doctor, what did she say? Oh, you've been consulting with your lawyer. How did she advise you? Mm, okay. You're running so, for office. She sounds amazing. Um, and that's why I'm petitioning to have next term be referred to as the winter Ovester. Okay, these ladies are just delusional at this point. I learned this one from my girlfriend. Um, we don't move out of the way for men on the street. Similarly, I'm not holding the door for men anymore. Unfortunately, due to our behavior, we have lost this privilege. I was just walking up to my apartment, bag, bag, box over my shoulder being held up with my head and two men just like different flights of stairs, different areas in the building, just like watched me struggle with the door, bang my head. Like, you've lost the privilege. You're not polite enough to hold a door for a man, but you expect them to help you carry your bags. But you do admit that due to our behavior, we've lost this privilege. What do women want? Beats me. I work in coffee, so I'm always going to serve the woman first. A couple comes up. I'm going to look at the woman first. I'm going to say, hi, ma'am, what would you like? Ladies first. Right. I wonder who thought of that first. So a lot of these are just ladies whining about things that are not even that relevant. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me to walk about with this chip over your shoulder. Like people that walk about with chips on their shoulders, how do you do it? How do you live life with such heaviness on your body? I do not understand and I hope to never understand where that comes from. But I can see some things in what they're saying. For instance, being cut cold. The girl that says, Ever a man calls me like sweetie or darling or gorgeous, I will call them that back. I've actually done that before and it's hilarious. So I can rock with that. It's not that serious. But some of this other stuff is mm, it's just downright weird to think that way. But this next video, even if I'm not really in support of a lot of this stuff that these ladies are saying, I think is absolutely asinine and it's peddling asininities. But this particular one, I can sort of agree with, so... Let me show it to you. So my form of microfeminism is that every time I see a product for women designed by a team of men, it pisses me off so much and I just make it better. So like one out of every five women in America is supposedly using this mediocre product. So my friends and I made a much better one. And then we were like, wait, this guy owns the biggest pregnancy app. And so now we made the most gorgeous pregnancy tracker. I kind of want to remake some physical products. Let me know your thoughts. You know why I love that video? She's actually taking this trend and pretty much selling something with it. Within the space of 15 seconds or so, she has now shown us two of her creations. And that is amazing as far as I'm concerned. I have very little respect for a person that can diagnose their situation to some degree and just does nothing about it. Just throws their hands up and complains all day rather than try to fix the problem. What I've noticed in my lifetime is I see that more in women. I've seen it in men too. It's even uglier on men, by the way, because as a woman, you might get a man that might help you. But as a man, you might get a woman that might help you, but women are less tolerant to that sort of thing than men overall. So what I'm saying is women tend to complain like a lot. That's why you're seeing these sort of trends pop up on TikTok. You know, even when we're no longer victims like we once were, we keep trying to look for ways to be. This particular video, I quite liked it because this is what the microfeminism thing should be about. Not just hating men or seeing enemies where they are known and then treating men badly because you came up with some stupid idea in your head that someone is doing something to you based on your gender, whereas that's not what is happening. You're always seeing danger when there's no danger at that. You're always seeing abuse when there's no abuse there. Pretty much making up stuff to make yourself feel like the gender that is still bit down, whereas by many indications that has not been the case for quite a while. So with this um, last video, instead of complaining, what I particularly admire is when a person, if they're able to take that situation, a bad situation, and turn it into a good situation, don't be a victim. Okay, don't be a victim. It feels good, I guess. I guess it feels good to be a victim, to have people sorry for you. But don't be. I can get with this lady's video because she's like, okay, men are the ones getting the accolade for this. What can I do about it? I'm going to create something. How about that? Create something. Do something. Anything. If more women were the ones creating things, if more women were the ones going into the technical jobs that the world survives on, perhaps, perhaps there won't be all this non-existent sexism 
in the day-to-day that you think you experience. Perhaps you'd feel more empowered. How about that? Empower yourself. Because men certainly did. They worked their ass off morning, afternoon, nights. And you, you have this preconceived bias and thinking, oh, this was easy to, to achieve. It was not. Newsflash, nothing good comes easy. So yes, I can get with this particular video because that is brilliant. Men are the ones getting the accolades from this. I want to get accolades. Let me set up an app. Let me replace what the men are doing. Wonderful. You go for it, darling. I will get right behind you and say that is microfeminism. But for these other ladies that are just whining about whatever it is they are whining about, I can't get with that. Anyway, what do you think about this microfeminism trend? Leave a comment below and I will see you on the next one. Adabo.